Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't had the Doña that works at Hong Kong Bar and TJ, smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and have her smash it right now. Let me give a shout out to the people that blessed me on uh, yesterday's live. Sergio Esquiel, Tony Montel, which I called Tony Montana. Randy S., thank you. On behalf of me and my family, thank you. Now, on to the patrons. Lori, 559CO, Ruben, Cornbread Killer, Herb Yuma AZ, CJ Zalvalza, EOP Whisperer, Las Vegas Flights Live. Charge my fucking tablet. <laughs> Pre of these nuts, Lockdown 5, Crystal Bond, La Reina, Hernan, Don't Trip, Winston, Alejandro, Trailero 760, Breathing Underwater, El Skid, Lead with Love, Albert 12, AI Vega, Esquiel, Big Bad 48, JT, Nova, Abuelita, Irma, Abuelita's Journey, Armando, Linda, The Retired CO, Michigan Wolverines, Mikey559, The Homie Marius, Chevelle66, Gigi, and Dal Serrero. If you have not already signed up for that Patreon, please hit that link in the description below. You're definitely missing out. This episode right here, man. What's it like to be a Sureño in the California Department of Corrections, CDCR, and Rehabilitation, Foosball? Yes, yeah, so, Hector, well, you were never a Sureño, man. You can't be speaking on that. Check it out, guys. My interactions with the Southern Hispanics, right, a.k.a. the Sureños, they represent the blue, right, color blue, the bandana blue. The number 13, 13. Mm. My interactions with them and, man, my, my knowledge, right? My knowledge, which is vast. Vast, does that mean, is that a word? Great. It's greatly, right? One fucking thing that always gets me is on more than one occasion, some sons of bitches have left comments on here calling me a South Sider sympathizer. Wow. Anyhow, that couldn't be further from the truth, and here's why. Let's rewind the clock, the hands of time, all the way back to Sentinella State Prison in Imperial, California, which borders Mexico. A different time frame back there, man. Heavy hitters were in the shoe. No foosball tables on the recreational yard. The gymnasiums were full of bunk beds, full of sureños, and paisas, the one that I worked in, Charlie Jim. That was the group, the gang, the disruptive group, the collective that I... I don't want to use the terminology had the most problems with, okay? But definitely... Definitely, there is something to be said of a young military guy coming back from war, thinking he's all that in a bag of chips, and some young Sureños coming from fucking Los Angeles, the IE in San Diego, thinking they're a, uh, all that in a bag of chips. And young, right? So you can see, boom, I just said it. I didn't know how I was going to say it, but I just said it. You got two youngsters, Hispanics at that. You be knowing how that Aztec blood be running through us. Just like treacherous motherfuckers. Like, I'm going to get you. <laughs> Anyhow, you could see, right? There ain't no fucking friendship there. Collective there. Buddy, buddy. High-fiving. No, it was uh, not animosity. Would you say animosity? Tension, okay? The air was crispy. Tension. But that went for everybody, staff-wise, because that group, you knew that when you fucked with one, you got them all, right? And when I say fucked with one, this is what's going to, this is a good episode. They're all good, but this one's a really good one. You know how they be saying, Hector, officers had to have had a reason to get assaulted. They just don't assault you for no damn good reason. Well, you guys are, even you level GP killers are forgetting the rule. The rule back then, I don't know about the rules now, the rules have gone out the window. But the rules back then for the Southern Hispanics was that if you were in possession of a weapon, 
which they were, on a level four yard, and a correctional officer was patting you down, right? Hey, come here, man. Let me pat you down. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, what's this right here? Finds a weapon in the waistband. Those Southerners had direct orders to use that weapon on that officer, period. It's a fucking fact. I'm not even crossing my fingers. So you tell me how the officer had that coming. Well, he shouldn't have put his dirty pig hands on that Sureño cop. <laughs> you see what I mean, though, right? That's a rule that COs didn't make up that rule. Fuck that rule, right? I didn't like that rule. It gave me the heebie-jeebies. So yeah, doing your job could get you stomped out by 100 plus individuals. Facts. I just chewed some ice. Probably sounded extra louder on here. Getting worked up. The coffee's hitting. So yeah, I want you guys to agree with that because you know that's a goddamn truth. Well, at least a Sentinella and definitely Calipat. There's a whole documentary on that shit. Um, And I told a friend one time, my buddy. I'm like, yeah, bro, like, fuck, man. You find a fucking knife on one of these dudes. You find a shank, man. They're all going to jump you. He's like, so what do you do, bro? You don't pat them down? I'm like, no, dude. You just hang on for the ride, right? You hang on for the ride. You mentally prepare to dump him, right? Dump him and get back up. You don't ever want to be on the ground. I don't care about anything. You never want to be on the ground, right? Dump him, smash him, get up and just fucking put your back up against the wall. Do something, G. Yeah, fucking car just drove by, triggered my PTSD. I thought they were finally coming to get me. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, so yeah, that was the rules back then. So you can see like Hector wasn't no South Side sympathizer. And it's kind of dumb that I had to explain that. But they meant business, man. Um, Numbers, 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 right? And this isn't to bash anybody or bash anything. This is for for this is for knowledge, right? <clears throat> the numbers. And this is true because I've talked to a lot of uh COs after the fact, man. And they're like, yeah, you get a lot of them, you get a lot of them in one area. Yeah, man. They, you know, pumping, pumping out their chest, showing off that Glanton, Compton, like they'll they don't get mousy, right? Because they're not disrespectful, right? They're not disrespectful. They're not going to go out of their, their way to disrespect a CO because that in itself has consequences uh, on their side as well as our side. So that's not going to happen. But they get a little bit more j- froggy, froggy when they got friends around. And when you isolate one of them, you know, I can't even teach you good old correctional officer 101 anymore because it, 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 <laughs> I saw a sticker the other day that says, hold the line. I don't know if you guys know, but the line is gone. The line is gone. You guys have lost the line, period. Uh, abandon ship. <laughs> Fucking leave now while you can. But, uh, you isolate one of them, man, and you get in their ear. It's a whole different song and dance. Let me tell you. All right. But. Again, not to be disrespectful, just to put a statement out there. Um, so what can you expect, man? You're a South Sider. You just got off the bus. Well, you're going to get greeted by your people, man. They're going to approach you. They're going to ask to see your paperwork, meaning let me see your charges. I don't want to make sure you have no funny business, no shit you ain't supposed to be having in your paperwork, man. Cool. You're going to get the layout of the land. Hey, these tables right here belong to us. Those tables belong to the blacks. Those tables belong to the whites. That's our drinking fountain right there. I don't think I mentioned this, man, but like, let's talk about taking it back in the day when you guys had separate drinking fountains. Remember when it was uh, like slavery and back then you had different drinking fountains? Well, in California, yeah, one side of the day room, there's a, a drinking fountain. It's for the blacks and the others. The other side of the day room is for the whites and the Mexicans. They, you know, same with the showers. You guys already be knowing about that racially segregated California prison, though. Um, And I do. I do prefer the California racially segregating themselves. Because could you imagine going to, like, Alabama, Mississippi, and you're of a different race, and you just get mopped up by another race? You're going to, like, feel... 
like you're left alone, man, on an island, right? Ain't nobody going to have your back, G. <laughs> but I couldn't do it, right? <laughs> Either or. You're going to get the rules of the reglas. You're going to say stuff like um, no being drunk on the tier, which is an excellent rule. No being high on the tier, which is another excellent rule. Um, no disrespecting the COs. Great fucking rule. Excellent. Continue. Um, you're going to be suited and booted at all times. Uh, you know, and uh, dubs. Shout out to dubs, man. Go over there. Subscribe. Uh, we got into a conversation about this because he didn't, couldn't believe that the whites and the southerners would not shower, refused to shower during a lockdown when lockdowns were lockdowns. There's no more. Because they knew they had to come out in boxers and shower shoes. Okay? So the rules being you cannot be in the day room in shower shoes, they would just refuse. Um... You know, so I thought more about that. So how would it look? We would go around as a CO. We already knew that they were going to refuse. And we would have a, a, a little a little pencil and a little paper, nothing like this, and be like, hey, are you going to shower today, man? No? Okay, go to the next cell. Uh, blacks, you going to shower today? Yeah, okay, you write down 118, right? You go and you go and you go and you write a list of all the showers, the inmates that are going to shower. Then you hand it up to the control booth officer because he has access to opening the doors. And he just opened those doors. And I know Dubs was asking, like, how, if I, if they crack my door, I'm just going to come out in shoes. But we just wouldn't crack the door. Thinking back, we would just write down the showers that were going to open. And one time a Sureño did say, yeah, I am going to shower. But the neighbors heard him. And they're like, hey, oh, <laughs> 1022 that, this pensa. Never mind, CO, what's your police codes? So, they were checking each other. You better not shower, right? I think the new the dude didn't know he was new. Okay. What about that criminal activity? Heck, could they be doing criminal activity in there? Of course they be doing criminal activity, man. Drug transactions. Now, I'm not going to give up game, you know, because, I mean, the fuck's the point anyways? Giving up game or not giving up game. Fucking game is, foosball is a game now. This, this, foosball is cheers to fucking foosball. Um, making weapons, <sighs> making weapons in the chow hall. I mean, you can make weapons out of anything, right? Now, I have always said that the whites make the best weapons, right? But that is not to take away from the Southern Hispanic, the Sureños weapons. It, what do you want me to tell you? They're, they're dangerous, right? Extremely fun. And they're steel. Let me let me dive into that. They, <laughs> they're steel, metal, okay? You start going into the other races, right? I'm just keeping it real. I've seen weapons from every race, okay? Oh, you there you're going to go. You're going to start sympathizing again, Hector. I can see it. Motherfuckers, you don't want me to keep it real. You want me to keep it real. <laughs> other races, right? May or may not have some bullshit-ass sharpened fucking toothbrush. With a dull point, right? Like, it doesn't even... I mean, yeah, I would appreciate getting stabbed by that thing instead of a piece of actual steel. I never seen a... Plastic... No. I never seen a plastic Mexican weapon, right? Definitely not in a removal. Definitely not in an attempted murder. That's for a fucking fact. I saw some fucking pexiglass. Pexiglass, I don't know how the hell they got it. Where they got it, I, think I, I do got a picture of it, with a kite wrapped around it. Now, pexiglass is fucking glass, pretty much. And you cannot be detecting it in the metal detector. Here we go. Hooping, keistering, putting stuff in your butt to move it from point A to point B. It is a 100% probability that every level four inmate, again, back then, man, I don't know what the fuck has happened. Back then. That every fucking level four inmate had a goddamn weapon hooped or on their possession. Facts, facts, facts. I don't care what you say. It's the truth. Um, and even if they didn't, but they did, they were easily accessible on the yard, man. The yard, 
Every little job had its little perks for those sureños. The mac rep, the yard crew workers, the porters. I'd be seeing what you guys be doing, man. Well, I told you guys we know everything, right? I see where I see you talking over there on that cell. I see you go from that cell to that cell and pass something underneath the door. Right? You just be watching, okay? So like, damn, Hector, this is a really good perspective of the Sureños. Yeah, man. So the tension was there. And because of uh, the staff assaults, whenever it was blue on green, so, which it always was but not w wasn't, if you know what I mean. Like whenever there was an incident, right after an incident between blue and green, the tensions were high. There, I said it. I was trying to figure out how to say it. Other than that, yeah, there's like normal room temperature and then like, which is already crispy. And then something happens. It's just like, fuck, man. Were you scared, Hector? Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. Ain't nobody trying to try to fight 100 motherfuckers. Um, this is not going to happen. It's not going to work. <laughs> oh, man. You know. When I would work the gun post, I had a little plan in my head. I'm not going to tell you guys my plan, but it was a plan that if that if inmates ever attack staff, I had a little plan in my head. I never had to use my plan, right? <laughs> Can't be having plans, bro. Yeah, of course, you need to have plans. Can't get caught off guard. And thank God I never had to do, use my plan, right? But it would have, I think it would have been a damn good effective fucking plan, right? I think I would have stopped it immediately. <laughs> Man, Asco Hector, the fuck? <laughs> it's a good plan, but uh, let's. Oh man, getting to the back, right? The back, ASU, ad seg. Okay, I can go into, I can go into, let me go into this. All right. The Mesa system, fuck it, doesn't exist anymore. Why not? Doesn't exist anymore. It's a thing of the past. I'm giving you guys history. All right, you guys like to use the the term "shot caller," right? And that's a good ass. That's a good term. But you know, you have the llavero, the bloquero. Basically, you have a shot caller of the yard. Then you that's designated. Then you have an individual per each block, the housing unit, and then you have possibly an inmate per each section. Okay. They all do the reporting, right? And they're all representing something or someone, period. That's about as far as I'm going to go on that one. I don't like getting too close to that line because sometimes I could get snagged up and the fuck will, they'll get me. <laughs> the fuck? Don't want to get got, right? Don't want to get... Nobody ever wants to get got. <clears throat> Some of those duties could consist of collecting money, collecting Drugs. Okay, so going to the back, right? Once you collect it, where do they got to go, Hector? <clears throat> well, it has to go to ADSEG, ASU, because that's technically a headquarters of a prison, right? That's where the... What do you want to call it, man? That's, that's where the... <sighs> it's not mousepiece. It's not heavy hitters. It's kind of like... <clears throat> You know what I mean, right? You know what I mean. I don't have to uh, in, uh, fucking go further in on that. Right? They sort shit out. All right, this has to go over there. Cool. Bam. So sometimes they would purposely put two sureños with a lot of contraband in their anal cavity and stab the shit out of one individual. So then now, or they could even stage a fight. And now you accomplish all kinds of goals. You remove somebody you wanted to remove. You sent stuff to the back to include messages, and then they give everything its business as usual, right? So let me just, uh, you guys can see, probably going to have to do a part two, because I was kind of like l buttering you guys up, the top layer. Let me get to, and I never talked to Sureños, right? Because you, they need a shadow. They need somebody else to talk to you. I did talk to my porter, like, hey, hey, what's up, Garcia? Hey, what's up, Ortiz? Um, a rapport, right? A rapport. But to be there and be chopping it up and telling jokes and laughing, no. Like, 
with the blacks. Yeah, I've had more conversations with more OG blacks than I have GP Sureños. That's a fucking fact. 100% fact. Right? Because we could just sit there and chop it up. Hey, OG, tell me about the old days, man. Tell me about what LAPD used to do. The fuck? They used to drop you off in the wrong neighborhood and take your shirt off so you could show your tattoos? I used to just like not fish for information because it was a fucking conversation. So I just used to, I, I like learning, right? Now let's fast forward to when your boy was a lieutenant. This is how we're going to end it. When you're, when I was a lieutenant at Donovan on Bravo Yard, formerly known as uh, Two Yard. You got two ad seg buildings in the back over there, building six and building seven. You had some heavy hitters on that yard, okay, period. Each table was for their race, right? Let me tell you about something about being a CO or, or uh, wearing green. The least attention that you bring you, you bring to yourself, the better, right? As an inmate, okay? If you're an inmate, the least attention that you bring to yourself, the better, period. CEOs are fucking lazy, man. Let me tell you, we don't like to work. But if we have to, we will. There was a table in the middle of the yard where all the Sureños would, not all, because it was, they were small numbers. It was a small yard. It was only three G, three buildings were GP. The other two were ad sex. So small numbers in general. There was a table in the middle of the yard, the heavy hitter, maybe with an S plural. The very important people would sit there with the entourage and everybody else, right? They would just sit at that table. Yeah, you have the bodyguards facing outwards, watching, watching the cops, watching the program office, seeing if the, what's the lieutenant up to over there, man? Are you drinking his chanate? What the hell? Are they going to come hit the pads? Okay. They were <clears throat> sitting there. There is no doubt they were doing criminal activity. No fucking doubt. No doubt. But it was about as invisible to the naked eye as possible, right? Listen to what I'm saying. Now, <laughs> oh my God, in front of building six, and I've told this story before, right? I'll be damned if you had a table full of blacks right there sitting. And I'm watching them, right? And they're taking out their cell phone. They're posted up like this. They got the Jesus piece. I did, they did have a Jesus piece. I seen it. I confiscated it. They're like that, throwing up the blood, whatever they throw up, right? So I'm looking and I'm like. <sighs> ah, that's a cell phone. That's a cell phone. Tenet Bravo ain't going to get worked up over a cell phone or the Jesus piece. So then I see them smoking, right? They're smoking marijuana cigarettes. And I'm like, <sighs> right? And then the final fucking straw I see they have a bag full of fucking pruno in between their legs. They got their tumbler, their coffee mug, and they're dipping it in there. Now, that's when I lost my mind. Holy shit, that's enough. Hey, Sarge, come here, man. Get, get, the, get the yard cops over here. Let's go, man. Come here. Look at this shit. The fuck? Right? Taking pictures with a contraband cell phone. Smoking marijuana cigarettes, which are illegal. And Pruno, in me manufactured alcohol, on the fucking yard, right? Like, we're back on the block. It wasn't the cell phone that got me, that di didn't get me off my chair. It wasn't the weed that didn't get me off the chair. It was the fucking seeing all three, right? Because, God forbid, somebody important from Greenside walks by and just sees that shit. You know how fucking stupid that's going to make me look? Like, damn, LT, this is how you run your yard? This is, this is you right here? Fuck. <laughs> Hell nah. Fuck no. Right? 
So, sneaky little plan, right? I can't tell you guys a sneaky little plan. Anyhow, we have to walk by the Mexicans. Well, the Mexicans don't know if we're going to hit them or not. So you can see, I, I watch everything and I see them posturing up, right? I'm like, fuck. Like, well, I wasn't scared because I knew we weren't going to go towards them. They didn't know that. But had we went over there, had we got, we could have got into a tussle, whatever the fuck they were doing. Like I said, they weren't invisible, right? P what it looked like is they were sitting at the fucking table having a grand old conversation. That's cool. Conversation is a conversation. Didn't see no cell phones, didn't see no weapons, didn't see no... And I was looking, didn't see no cell phones, didn't see no weapons, didn't see no alcohol, didn't see no drugs. But they tense up, and then the other Sureños start walking towards the table, which is crazy, because they'll come from the handball court. It's kind of like reinforcements, man, like the military, QRF. And here we go, right? But we're, don't trip, fellas, we're gonna, we'll get you next time. We'll catch you slipping. <clears throat> so then we go to the blacks, man, they start fucking, oh, why are you guys tripping? Why are you always fucking with us? Man, you don't be fucking with the Mexicans. This and that. I'm like, hey, the fuck is all of this? Right? Oh, man, you're doing too much. I'm doing too much. <laughs> I'm doing too much. Jeez. <laughs> Anyhow, that's how you get a, a little taste of what prison is like, right? How the Southerners run their program. It's a pretty fair, fucking non-biased, very accurate story. All first person. Uh, so the message for today, man, the message for today is in anything you do, in anything you do, it's oftentimes, oftentimes better to fly under the radar, right? And I wish I could take my own advice because I did re resign from the department and fight the good fight, but that shit went against my, my, my moral and ethical beliefs, but that you guys already know that. So with that, keep pushing forward.